In a number of free energy designs, a, an alternator is spun to give electrical AC output for powering loads. Uh, it's sometimes found that, for instance, in the Donny Watts um, hydrodynamic system and in the William Skinner gravity powered operation and in the Buey Moran style of three phase motor fed by a high voltage that the uh, alternator providing the output is a key component and it is important to reduce the power needed for that component itself. One of the best systems for doing that is Raymond Cromery's electrical generator which is not actually widely known. This is where the objective is to produce electricity from a rotating magnetic field, magnetic field. There has always been a search for some method of either reducing or eliminating altogether the drag on the rotor when electrical current is drawn from the output coils. One design which claims to have very limited drag caused by current draw is the Cromery design. The main characteristics of this design are said to be 1. It has almost constant electrical power output even when the rotor speed is altered by as much as 35%. 2. It can continue to operate with its electrical output short circuited without heating the rotor or causing a braking effect. 3. The production efficiency, which is the electrical output divided by the driving force, is high. 4. The frequency of its AC output power can be adjusted to that required by the equipment which it is powering. 5. The rotor can be spun at any rate from 800 revs per minute to 1600 revs per minute. 6. The simple construction allows manufacturing costs to be about 30% less than other generators. 7. This generator is recommended for supplying power at or above the 1 kilowatt level. Raymond Comrie patented his design more than 50 years ago in March 1968 and that patent is reproduced at the end of this document. As with most patents, Raymond shows various arrangements, some which can produce AC and some which can produce DC. I will attempt to describe an AC version here. This alternator has a stator and a rotor as normal. This is a side view of the device itself and this is an end view of the device. The two main components of the stator are two powerful magnets. There's a north and south pole facing each other at one side and a north and south pole facing each other at the other side. That those uh, two magnets can be either electromagnets if you power a coil wrapped around them or they could be permanent magnets where you don't need those two extra coils. The rotor itself has got is attached to the drive shaft which is rotated and it, they, there are again uh, bars of soft iron laminated shims which are, have a coil wrapped around them. The actual output from these coils uh, is wired together to give the coils in series and the output is picked up through brushes which press against this rotating disc which is attached to the rotor shaft. It looks as if the support for the brushes are actually attached to the rotor but they are not. The supports for those brushes run through and are attached to the stator. And you can see from the end the gap between the stator and the rotor. It's a small amount of a strong magnetic field going across the gap. And then the rotor rotates 
uh, to conform the completion of the actual design itself. The stator has two large electromagnets, as I said, shown in green and made up of thin insulated layers of soft iron in order to block eddy currents. These electromagnets can be replaced by strong permanent magnets, whether AC or DC output is required. Each of those versions uses brushes to extract the output power. This is the arrangement for the AC version. The four coils of the output are connected together in series, and a brush takes the output from the disc on the rotor shaft through the load to an earth connection. The other end of the coil set is attached to the rotor um, drive shaft, which is made of metal, and it's also earthed, and that gives the actual output of the device itself. It is a clever design. The patent for this device is mediumly difficult to follow, um, mainly because more than one version is shown, and it is difficult to get a grasp of the basic design when you're distracted by different varieties of the way it can be implemented. But the patent itself is US 3374376 of the 19th of March 1968, the inventor being Raymond Comrie. He entitles it Electric Generator. He says, my present invention relates to an electric generator which converts magnetic energy into electric energy using two components which can rotate relative to each other that is a stator and a rotor, one having electromagnets or permanent magnets which induce a voltage in a winding which forms part of an output circuit mounted on the other component. Conventional generators of this type use a winding whose conductors form loops in different axial planes so that opposite parts of each loop pass through the field of each pole pair twice per revolution. If the loops are open circuit, then no current flows in the winding, and no reaction torque is developed, leaving the rotor free to turn at the maximum speed of the driving unit. As soon as the output winding is connected across a load or is short circuited, the resulting current flow tends to retard the motoring of the rotor to an extent which depends on the intensity of the current and this makes it necessary to include compensating speed regulating devices if it is necessary to maintain a reasonably constant output voltage. Also, the variable reaction torque subjects the rotor and its transmission to considerable mechanical stresses and possible damage. It's therefore the general object of this invention to provide an electric generator which is none of the above disadvantages. Another object is to provide a generator whose rotor speed varies very little in speed between open circuit operation and current delivery operation. Another objective is to provide a generator whose output voltage is not greatly affected by fluctuations in its rotor speed. Comrie say, says, I have found that these objectives can be achieved by rotating an elongated ferromagnetic element, such as a bar-shaped soft iron armature, and a pair of pole pieces which create an air gap containing a magnetic field. Each of the outer extremities of the armature carries a winding. Ideally, these windings are connected in series and these coils form part of a power output circuit used to drive a load. As the armature rotates relative to the air gap, the magnetic circuit is intermittently completed and the armature experiences periodic remagnetizations with successive rotations of polarity. When the output circuit is open, 
The mechanical energy applied to the rotor, less a small amount needed to overcome the friction of the rotating shaft, is absorbed by the work of magnetization, which in turn is dissipated as heat. In actual practice, however, the resulting rise in temperature of the armature is hardly noticeable, particularly if the armature is part of the continuously air-cooled rotor assembly. When the output circuit is closed, part of the work is converted into electrical energy as the current flow through the winding opposes the magnetizing action of the field and increases the apparent magnetic reluctance of the armature and so the speed of the generator remains substantially unchanged if the output circuit is open or closed. As the armature approaches its position of alignment with the gap, the constant magnetic field tends to accelerate the rotation of the armature, aiding the applied driving force. After the armature passes through the gap, there is a retarding effect when the rotor picks up speed. The flywheel effect of its mass overcomes these fluctuations in the applied torque and a smooth rotation is produced. In a practical embodiment of this invention, the magnetic flux path includes two actually axially spaced magnetic fields traversing the rotor axis and substantially at right angles to it. These fields are generated by respective pole pairs cooperating with two axially spaced armatures of the type already described. It is convenient to arrange these two armatures so that they lie in a common axial plane and similarly the two field producing pole pairs also lie in a single plane. The armature should be laminated to minimize eddy currents and so they are made of highly permeable, typically soft iron, foils whose principal dimensions is perpendicular to the rotor axis. The foils can be held together by rivets or any other suitable method. If the ferromagnetic elements are part of the rotor, then the output circuit will include the usual current collecting means such as slip rings or commuter segments depending on whether AC or DC current output is desired. The source of coercive force in the stator includes, advantageously, a pair of oppositely positioned yoke-shaped magnets of the permanent or electrically energized type, whose extremities constitute the pole pieces mentioned above. If electromagnets are used in the magnetic circuit, then they may be energized by an external source or by direct current from the output circuit of the generator itself. Cromery says, I have found that the terminal voltage of the output circuit does not vary proportionately to the rotator speed as might be expected, but instead it drops at a considerably slower rate with decreasing rotor speed. So in a particular tested unit, this voltage fed, fell to only about half its original value when the rotor speed was dropped to one-third of its original value. This non-linear relationship between terminal voltage and driving rate produces a substantially constant load current and therefore electric output over a wide speed range, at least under certain load conditions, inasmuch as the inductive reactance of the winding is proportional to frequency and consequently to rotor speed, so as to drop off more rapidly than the terminal voltage in the event of a speed reduction with the resulting improvement in the power factor of the load circuit. If the magnetic circuit contains only a single pole pair per air gap, the flux induced in the rotating armature will change its direction twice per revolution so that each revolution produces one complete cycle 
of 360 electrical degrees. In general, the number of electrical degrees per revolution will equal 360 times the number of pole pairs. It being apparent that the number ought to be odd, since with even numbers it would not be possible to have poles alternating in polarity along the path of the armature, and at the same time to have the north and south poles of each pair at di diametrically opposite locations. In any case, it's important to dimension the curved facing faces of po the pole pairs in such a manner so as to avoid allowing the armature to bridge between adjoining poles. So it is necessary to make the sum of the arcs spanned by these faces in the plane of rotation equal to considerably less than 360 degrees electrical. The invention will now be described in more detail, reference being made to the accompanying drawings. And the pattern continues then, he's showing the various drawings that he has and the alternative versions of the actual generator which he envisages. Uh, he even has, has an arrangement where you can compare the actual output of his design of generator against the uh, typical uh, commercially available versions of generator. So this is the patent then from Raymond Comrie describing what is essentially a simple design of alternator which has got particularly useful types of output and characteristics.